In this video, we're going to look at how to balance chemical equations. And while we're doing that, we'll discuss one of the primary laws of chemistry, and indeed the universe, the law of conservation of mass. The law of conservation of mass states that matter can neither be created nor destroyed. It can be changed from one form into another, and mixtures can be separated or made, and pure substances can be decomposed into other pure substances, but the total amount of mass remains constant. This means that whenever a chemical reaction occurs, the total mass of the reactants must equal the total mass of the products, since mass cannot be gained or lost. And the reason the mass remains constant is that the atoms cannot be created or destroyed, only rearranged. So another way of looking at this, a way that helps us in balancing equations, is that the number and type of atoms in the reactants, which are written on the left of an equation, must be identical to the number and type of atoms in the products, which are written on the right of the equation. All that can happen is that the atoms are rearranged. This law came about from the work of many early chemists, but it was the Frenchman Antoine Lavoisier, along with his wife Marianne, who most conclusively showed it to be true in the late 1700s. And it was only by some excruciatingly precise and careful lab work and the use of the best technology of the day, in particular accurate balances, that they were able to prove this law conclusively. So let's take a simple example, the combustion of hydrogen in oxygen to produce water. Let's first write out the formulae of the substances. We know that hydrogen and oxygen are part of the diatomic 7, so we can write them as H2 and O2, and water is H2O. So we can write the skeleton of our equation like this. Now let's draw some diagrams of our molecules so that it's easy to see the individual atoms. We'll draw a hydrogen molecule and an oxygen molecule. You can see each of them is made of two atoms joined together, bonded together and they will somehow combine to give water. Okay, let's do some atom accounting. As we've drawn them, we have two hydrogen atoms on the left and also two on the right, here and here. So we're okay for hydrogen. No hydrogen has mysteriously disappeared or been created. But what of the oxygen? On the left, we've got two oxygen atoms, but on the right, we only have one. So our oxygen atoms are not balanced. There are two ways that you might deal with this. One would be to change the formula of water. Let's make it H2O2. Then we've got two hydrogens on the left and two on the right, and two oxygens on the left and two on the right. Can we do this? No, we cannot do it. And the reason that we can't do it is that by changing the formula, you completely change the compound. H2O2 is hydrogen peroxide, a highly reactive bleach. It's really not something you want to be knocking back a glass of. It might help to try reading this out loud if you're having trouble getting it. Okay, so when hydrogen and oxygen react, you don't get hydrogen peroxide, you get water. And water is H2O, and so the H2O has to stay H2O. Never change the formulae of your compounds. So how else can we get another oxygen there on the right? Well, the only other option is to have another water molecule. Now, our oxygen is fine, We've now got two on the left and two on the right, but our hydrogen is unbalanced. We've got two on the left and four on the right. So what do we do? Well, we just need a little more hydrogen on the reactant side. And now we're good. We've got four hydrogens and two oxygens on the left and four hydrogens and two oxygens on the right, but rearranged this time into two water molecules. The final thing we need to do is show these adjustments in the reaction equation. And the way that we do this is by uh, using large numbers out the front of each of the formulae to show how many of each one there are. Now let's start with the oxygen. We have only one oxygen molecule, so we actually leave it blank. The tradition or the convention is that if there is no number out the front of the molecule or the atom, that just means that there's one of them. If there's more than one, then we have to indicate it with a number. So for our hydrogen molecules, we have two of those. So we indicate that with a large two. Two hydrogens plus one oxygen gives, and we have two water molecules, so we put a large two out the front there as well. Now, if you want to check that your balancing is correct and you don't want to be bothered actually drawing out pictures of all the atoms and molecules, uh, then the way to do it is to scan through your reaction equation and do some simple maths. 
So again, we're checking to make sure that the number and type of atoms on the left is the same as on the right. So we'll check the hydrogens first. On the left, we have an H2 molecule, so that's two hydrogens in one molecule, and we have two of those molecules, so two times two is four hydrogens on the left. And if we go over to the right, we find we have in a single water molecule, there are two hydrogens, but we have two water molecules, so again it's two times two, which is four hydrogens. So four on the left, four on the right, and we're balanced. For oxygens, on the left we have one oxygen molecule, and that molecule is made up of two oxygen atoms, so that's two O's. And on the right, each water molecule has a single oxygen atom, and there are two water molecules, so that's two oxygens. So our oxygens are also balanced. Okay, let's try uh, doing some examples. Now in a second, I'm going to ask you to pause the video and try this for yourself, but I will run through them also. Note that in order to do this, you're going to have to be able to write down the formulae of each of these compounds or elements. So either have your notes ready from the previous videos, or perhaps you're able to do them from your head. Okay, so pause the video now and give it a go. Alright, the first example, hydrochloric acid reacts with magnesium to give magnesium chloride and hydrogen. So hydrochloric acid, that's one of our uh, common acids, its formula is HCl. Magnesium is one of the elements, it's just Mg. Remember most of the elements can be written as single atoms, it's only those diatomic seven where you have to worry about uh, anything more complicated. And that becomes magnesium chloride and hydrogen. Let's just stick in the hydrogen first because it's simpler, that's one of our diatomic seven, H2. Now for magnesium chloride we need to work out its formula. It's an ionic compound, because you can see it's made from a metal and a non-metal. So we need to work out the ions. Uh, magnesium is going to be Mg, it's in group 2, so it will have a charge of 2+. plus. Chlorine is made, uh, chloride is made of chlorine, so it'll be Cl. It's in group 7, so it's going to have a charge of 1-. minus. When we do the crossover, we get a formula of MgCl2, because two chlorides are needed to balance the 2 plus charge of the magnesium. Balancing the equation. Let's do the hydrogen first. On the left, we've got 1H, and on the right, we've got a hydrogen molecule, which is made up of two hydrogen atoms. So we've got one on the left and two on the right. So let's put a 2 in front of our HCl. So we've now got two hydrogens on the left and two on the right. Remember you can't change the formula of hydrochloric acid, you can't make it H2Cl, it just doesn't work. Okay, so now let's try the chlorides. Um, we've just made this into two hydrochloric acids. Each hydrochloric acid has one chloride, so that's two chlorides on the left. On the right, the magnesium chloride also has two chlorides, so that's also balanced. And now we'll finally we'll check our magnesium. We have one on the left and we also have one on the right. So that's balanced. Okay, let's try the next one. Aluminium plus oxygen goes to aluminium oxide. So aluminium is an element, the symbol is Al. Oxygen is also an element and it's one of the diatomic seven, so it's going to be O2. And they react to give aluminium oxide. Again, this is an ionic solid, a metal and a non-metal. Um, we'll work out the ions. The first one's going to be aluminium, which is in group 3, so it's going to be 3 plus. Oxide is oxygen, and it's in group 6, so it needs to gain two electrons to get a full octet, which means that it has a charge of 2 minus. When we do the crossover for that, that gives us Al2O3. Okay, let's balance it. On the left we have one aluminium, and on the right we have two aluminiums, so Let's make that a 2 there. Okay, now for oxygen, we've got 2 on the left and we've got 3 on the right. Okay, this could be a little bit tricky, but the way that we approach it is to look for the lowest common multiple of these two numbers. And the lowest common multiple of 2 and 3 is 6. So we're going to swing things so that there are 6 oxygens on either side. So oxygen molecule has 2 atoms in it. To make 6 atoms, we need 3 molecules. And on the right, we've got three oxygen atoms, so that means we need two molecules. So now on the left, we've got three times two, which is six oxygen atoms. And on the right, we've got two times three, which is six oxygen atoms. Now, let's just go back and double check the aluminium. Uh, 
we've got two on the left, but now because we've put this two in front of the aluminium oxide, we've got two times two, which is four aluminiums on the right. So that means we need to go back and make a modification and make that four. So I'll just clean that up. There we go. Four aluminiums on the left, four on the right, six oxygens on the left, six on the right. Now, notice that that balancing uh, required a little iteration. We had a first go and then we had to make some modifications and go back and, and change things. That frequently happens when you're balancing equations. Don't be afraid of that. It's just a normal part of the process. Okay, uh, I'm going to look specifically at balancing combustion reactions because they can occasionally throw up a few uh, difficulties. But as long as you follow this basic method of balancing them, you should always be okay. The basic method uh, relies on the order of balancing and you can remember it by CHO, C-H-O. First balance the carbon, then balance the hydrogen, then balance the oxygen. So this is specifically for combustion of carbon-based fuels. So let's try methane and uh, burning in oxygen. So methane is CH4 plus oxygen gives carbon dioxide plus water. Okay, so balance the carbon first. One carbon on the left, one carbon on the right. That, that's fine. So next the hydrogens. H4, so four hydrogens on the left, and over here in the water, two hydrogens. So we need four hydrogens on the right, so we're going to put a two in front of the water. That will give us four hydrogens. Okay, now we do the oxygen. We've got O2, so two on the left, and on the right we've got two oxygens in the carbon dioxide one oxygen in the water but there are two waters so two there so a total of four on the right so two on the left four on the right we just need to double our number of oxygen atoms on the left okay let's try butane butane is the fuel that is used in lighters and sometimes to fire barbecues and its formula is C4H10 and we burn it in oxygen and it also produces carbon dioxide and water. Uh, okay, so CHO, CHO, carbons first. Four carbons on the left and only one on the right. So we need four carbon dioxides to use up those four carbons. H next, we've got ten hydrogens on the left and we have only two on the right. So we're going to need five water molecules in order to use up those ten hydrogens. And the last thing to do is the oxygen. So we've got two on the left and we've got four times two equals eight oxygens from the carbon dioxide and five oxygens from the water. That's a total of 13. Okay, so this is where it might seem tricky. We've got a total of 13 oxygens on the right and we've got two on the left. Now how many oxygen molecules do we need to provide 13 oxygen atoms? What we need is seven and a half molecules, or 13 on two. But we're not really allowed to have fractional numbers of molecules, so how can we turn this into a whole molecule? Well, the easiest thing is to multiply through the entire equation by two. If you double everything, then the oxygen will become a whole number. So I'll put them underneath here. We'll double our butane, double our oxygen, that gives us 13, double our carbon dioxide, that gives us 8, and double our water. That gives us 10. So I'll just write out the formulae again. And we'll just go through and do a double check that it's all balanced. Carbons first. 2 times 4 on the left, that's 8, and 8 carbons on the right. Uh, hydrogens. 2 times 10, that's 20 hydrogens on the left, and 10 times 2, that's 20 hydrogens on the right. And then oxygens, 13 times 2 is 26 oxygens on the left. And then we've got 8 times 2 is 16, plus 10 is 26. So we're all good. And this frequently happens with combustion reactions. If you ever run into a situation where your oxygen looks a bit weird, uh, that you've got uh, four and a half or six and a half or ten and a half oxygen molecules, all you need to do is multiply through the entire thing by two. Okay, last one, ethanol. Ethanol has the formula C2H6O. Ethanol is the alcohol that's in spirits and beer and things like this and is also blended with our petrol in cars. Uh, burn it in oxygen and it also gives carbon dioxide and water. 
Okay, carbons first. Two carbons on the left, so we need two on the right. Uh, six hydrogens on the left, so we need three water molecules to use up those six. And then uh, for oxygens, on the left we have the two from the oxygen molecule, but don't forget there's also one in the ethanol. So we actually have three over on the left. On the right we've got two times two is four, plus three is seven altogether. So somehow we need to change the left hand side to get seven oxygen atoms. Now of those seven, one of them is going to come from the ethanol, so that only leaves six, and we can get those six from three oxygen molecules. So just a final double check, two carbons on the left, two carbons on the right. Six hydrogens on the left, three times two is six hydrogens on the right. Uh, three times two oxygens plus one is seven, and over here we've got two times two is four plus three is also seven. So we're all good. Okay, this is your task. It's very similar to the examples I've just been doing. I'd like you to w write out these word equations as formulae and balance them.